Hi kids, and in this episode we're going to talk about the 1985 television series, Otherworld. Stay tuned. So the other day I'm cruising through YouTube on my TV. That's how I watch YouTube mainly is like on TV. I just start, you know, browsing around. Saw this thing come up. It was Otherworld. And it, on the little preview thing that runs was this little... Egyptian looking obelisk these guys with these silly guns that instead of you know coming out of their top they have to come out the bottom and this silly hover car and I'm like holy crap I remember this show so I'm like okay I gotta watch this the first episode is out there on YouTube the whole thing is out there commercials included by the way which was genius because it just adds to the experience but I watched this episode and I'm like sitting here going I do remember this but I don't remember the details it's really vague i remember the little details like the little egyptian thing and then with the guns and the cars and whatever but the story the actors the plot i didn't remember this at all so the first episode of this show is really not that bad this pilot uh it's about this family there's sterlings they go to egypt on this on a trip whatever get this scam artist takes them to the pyramid locks them in because they won't pay him another ten dollars and they find end up and they end up going through this dimensional gateway into this other world hence the name of the show right and predictably you know it's nothing like our world this guy drives up he's uh commander kroll captain kroll i don't remember there's a reason why i'm trying to wipe this from my memory we'll get there trust me um he's like oh what are you doing in the forbidden zone the zone troopers and all this crap you know and they end up taking his car and running away and spend the rest of the episode trying to avoid detection by Kroll, but also they run into the locals in this province that are all androids. The kid, uh, Trace, falls in love with one of these because they haven't learned that they're androids yet. And this whole sequence about, oh, you know, it, 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 it's actually a very good, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A very good discussion on discrimination on, or on what it means to be human about you know androids what makes them human or not human versus us we have the same emotions wants desires all this stuff and it's like what really makes us different oh you know there's there's things going on here that makes you go okay i'm on board yes the effects are total garbage you had like 35 dollars for a budget for this entire show apparently because this is just the production is terrible these uniforms look like they just glued some crap on a regular show. I don't know. Production value in the show for all eight episodes is just garbage. I can't even... I can't even... Let's just put it that way. I mean, it's it's just like... Yeah, I don't know. They gave him $5 and a pack of bubblegum. Let's go here and make a movie, make a series out of this. But at the end of the show, the pilot, um, they end up escaping this province and it's like, oh, this actually isn't bad. Then we come... I, I, after this first episode on YouTube, I was like, I gotta find the rest of these. I'm not gonna tell you where to find them because... But they're out there if you know where to look. So you can go get those, like I did, and you start watching them and you're just like, is this even the same show? Let me run down the, the remaining seven episodes here for you and you'll and try to get in my head and, and what I'm talking about. So the second episode, Trace gets conscripted into the military basically with you know conveniently and the whole episode is him trying to become an officer so he can get back out of the military but he has to do this silly thing with this old fleet of ultralights this is the zone trooper air force i guess is these ultralights no budget they had you know find a ultralight club somewhere hey can we use your stuff for a day i don't know but he gets through this thing becomes oh and kroll shows up you know and then they chase him out of the province the end now, okay, it's like, well, okay, that's not terrible. He won't, you know, he, he does this thing where he's not going to fire on civilians. Okay, that's noble of you and everything, I, I guess. But where's the plot, right? Where's us getting out of this world? Where's, oh, we need to follow these statues and obelisks to the gateway to send us back. There's like no mention of this until the very end. So I'm sitting here going, well, you know, okay, maybe they're just jumping us into the story. In the third episode, they go to this island. I'm thinking, well, if you're trying to find your way back to Earth, you know, through this portal, why are you going to this island? They it just they just oh we just showed up at this island. It's like some fantasy island thing. You know, that would have been relatively current, remember, people would have had a reference for that. But it's run by this woman who wants Hal, the dad, as her own. There's this weird 
uh, life extending drug thing going on. There's this whole, oh, this island was actually a weapons research base. I mean, there's stuff going on there, but again, where's the plot? Why are we trying to get home? And the point of this episode in particular is kind of fuzzy to me. It's just kind of like, well, typical, don't do drugs in K. Well, you know, the whole weapons, I don't know. You just sitting here going, well, all right. That was episode three. Episode four, I almost stopped watching because episode four is quite possibly the worst 45 minutes of television I have ever seen in my life. And here's why. So the whole point of this episode, number four, was that the kids, uh, Trace and Gina, start this rock and roll band in the, you know, they've never heard of rock and roll. It's like, you know, Back to the Future. Oh, your kids are gonna love it, right? Now, yeah, kind of like that, but they start playing in this rock and roll band. You know, I guess somebody invented the Les Paul in this dimension, but didn't bother to invent rock and roll. I don't know how that works, but it turns out being like a cattle, like the top 40 for that week in 1985. It's just like, that's all they do is sit up there and play in their little band and there's this whole sequence with this priest guy doing the whole oh it's evil it's so bad for our kids and it's going to turn them into monsters and if you play it backwards there's secret messages and i'm sitting here going well i'll give you that one for being current in the era that that was in but this whole episode is just one endless music video basically and i'm just sitting there going i almost threw in the towel i almost said this shit i'm done because that was just terrible but I didn't went on to episode five and I'm like wait a minute the kid is back to the first actor that it wasn't first in the pilot um I can't remember the kid's name from those two episodes but the um, kid and the rest of them Chris Habert I believe I don't know how you say it he's the kid from the last starfighter the little brother and it's like where have I seen this kid's face before and it, yes it was the little brother from the last starfighter anyway Apparently episode 5 and episode 1 were supposed to be one two-hour pilot or something and they got split up or it was part of a you know, two-part pilot, something like that. This episode isn't that bad again. And I, maybe it's, you know, the part because it was part of that pilot. They're in the, this bus with this old guy, get stopped at this border crossing and then they have to do this whole thing where they get split up amongst in this tribe of, you know, motorcycle gang, you know. That, yeah, it was 1985. I don't know, you know. And the whole point of this episode, I think, was a even more don't do drugs, kids, it's bad, MK thing with this whole chalk that everybody in this province does and they start getting people off of it. And then the zone troopers show up at the end that was always, this crawl would always just randomly appear. Oh, hey, you know, like kind of like the colonel guy in the A-team. Ah, I don't know. And they, yeah, and there was this thing with this whole, oh, look, there's another gateway back. And I'm sitting here going, oh, finally, we're going to get back to the story of trying to get home again. And they just touch on that and, no, nope, we're going to run away again. And every episode, they ended it with, I think it was the creator of the show, Roderick Taylor. And he's done a lot of good stuff, but not this. Sorry, I, sorry, I wanted to like this show. I thought I remembered this being better, but it's just, oh, I'm ashamed that I spent seven hours watching all of this, to be honest. So anyway, every episode ends with this like Rod Serling-ish treatise I think is read, you know, it's like, oh, and they have to expect him to say, here it is, in the Twilight Zone. You know, it's something almost identical to that. So that was episode five. Episode six was, oh, episode six. This is, this is a good part. It's called, I am woman, hear me roar. And these, the family shows up in this province where, where, where women run everything and men are treated as slaves, second-class citizens, not allowed to speak in public, auctioned off, at, you know, treated as property. And all I'm thinking about during this episode is, all you toxic jerkwads who sit there and bitch about everything being, oh my God, it's so woke, it's, you know, social justice warriors, whatever. This came out in 1985. What, I mean, just shut up, just shut up. This is not a new thing for science fiction. I'm sitting here going, okay, you know, that's cool, I guess, you're doing social issues. But, again, you know, they the, the episode's predictable, you know. It, it. Oh, and at the end of this episode, too, you know, the c commander, uh, commander Kroll shows up, like he always does, you know, he always tracks him down at the very last second. Because he's the guy, he gets thrown in jail and all this crap, and it's kind of funny. But, again, at the end, 
where's the plot, guys? Where the hell is the plot? Episode 7 is this goofy... Beauty and the Beast thing. It's like they start off in a, you know, covered wagon. Uh, and then they run into, you know, Beauty and the Beast. I don't remember what the guy's name is. A guy named Virago, which, you know... If you look up that word, it doesn't mean what I think they thought it meant. Um, but... He's kind of this Beauty and the Beast guy. He got transformed by the cold starlight, which is this crap that, you know, brought them here into this dimension and can get them home. Oh, maybe we're going to touch the plot again? Maybe? No, it's just the plot device to kill this guy. But they don't kill him. They just transform him back into human. Everybody, you know, in the end, everybody goes home. Well, they don't. There's one more episode left. And they almost, almost get back on point with this episode because... Number one, they're in this hot air balloon, right? And it lands in this province. And they're like, oh my god, a hot air balloon? What is going on? What is this thing? They show up in cars with these laser pistols and crap. But they've never seen a hot air balloon. I, yeah, okay, you know, make up your mind. There either is such an inequality and disparity in technology and whatever. They're either cavemen or they're zone troopers with their hover cars and laser pistols. Yeah, I don't know. Um... So they mistake the uh, girl, Gina, for their Princess Metra, who actually came from Earth in 1964, had a little amulet that was a, you know, Kennedy half dollar or whatever they are. Gina has one almost exactly like it. They're like, oh, you know, we're not worthy. She sees this, you know, uh, recording by this other girl. Oh, it's like, oh my God, maybe we're actually going to get on point. Maybe we're actually going to have a story here. And they kind of tease it, tease it, tease it, and they end... And that's it. That's all the episodes. I guess by you know the time they screwed up with uh, Rock and Roll Suicide, that was the title of episode four. By the time they finished with that and everybody went, nope, click. I guess there was no audience left. I don't blame them one bit. I almost threw in the towel at that episode. And But here's the, here's the deal. It showed great promise in that first episode. And then when you get to five and, and the last one, there's like three episodes that if you... Or to just take those three, you might actually have a decent show, movie, whatever. It's not a bad premise. It's not a bad setup. There are really good moments in this show. I mean, all eight episodes, the budget, the effects, is terrible. The soundtrack, the music reminds me of, if you've ever watched Strange Brew, you know, Bob and Doug McKenzie, the scene with them in the hockey rink with the organ. That's what it sounds like to me, and it just drives me up the wall every time I hear it. I accept, expected to, you know, Bob and Doug in there. Oh, I've seen Jedi 47 times or whatever. You know, it's terrible. It's so awful, but it has its moments. I'm giving this show a 2.0, and that's high just because it has this good premise. It has its moments where they, you know, okay, you're approaching, you know, a Star Trek, like commenting on things that's going on in society. That's cool. I'll give you points for that, and I did. Trust me, I gave him a lot of points. Rod Taylor, if you're out there and you happen to see this or read my post, take this premise, rewrite it, and go sell it to like Netflix or Hulu and make this a decent sci-fi series where they're actually trying to get home and have to struggle and, and solve mysteries and get, you know, to the next level on each episode instead of this silly situational garbage. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, it was kind of like Star, the old, you know, Star Trek original series in that aspect was that each episode was a nice little self-contained thing. They talked about whatever social issue of the day in a, you know, context of sci-fi without actually saying, oh, we're talking about this thing. Yeah, I'll give you that. But take this concept, rewrite it for today, make it a good story arc. You can still include little things like that along the way, but don't make it the focus of it. This has so much potential. You know, the, the whole thing beginning with androids, I thought this whole show was going to be, oh, they're going to go into this thing with androids. No, that was just the first episode. It's like, ah, oh, if you have stuck with that, could have been good. I mean, just take it and run with it. Netflix should buy it. Hulu, bidding war for it. I mean, just go for it. 2.0, like I said, the first episode's out there on... Um, YouTube, I'm going to include it in my blog post, which will be linked below. 
go watch that. Go find the other episodes. R matey. Um, you know, yeah. 2.0. This has been Sci-Fi Review. I gotta go cleanse my palate. Thanks for watching.